Want to know a secret? You're not going to ever enjoy your life if you don't enjoy yourself. I want to talk to you this weekend about enjoying your life. And when I say enjoying your life, I don't mean living in a party, living on vacation all the time, always getting to do everything that you want to do. I'm talking about really enjoying life. John 16, 24, love, 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 love this scripture. Ask and receive, and your joy will be full. Oh my gosh, is that ever a scripture for workaholics? <laughs> who are always trying to make something happen themselves. And all the controllers in the world. Come on now. Ask and receive. that your joy may be full. Let me give you a little example of how to live wrong and how to live right. This is about relationships, and I'll use Dave like I always do. <laughs> Isn't Dave wonderful to just sit in all these years and let me pick on him? I don't know that I'd have any pre anything to preach if I wasn't married to Dave. He just... <laughs> you know, I was always the kind of person if I thought you should do something and you weren't going to do it, then I was going to talk you into doing it. If I couldn't talk you into doing it, then I'd get mad at you if you didn't do it. It's called emotional manipulation. And so if I wanted Dave to do something and he wouldn't do it, if I didn't think it was the right thing that he, you know, his choice wasn't the right thing, then I'd try to convince him, convince him, convince him. And, you know, really, with most people, the more you try to convince them, the more determined they get they ain't going to do it. Because most people don't like to be manipulated, and I didn't realize that all, all my convincing did was make him feel like I was manipulating him, and so he wasn't going to give in. Well, God gives us an answer to all that. Ask and receive, <laughs> that your joy might be full. Now, there's another part to it. You have to be humble enough to think, I could be wrong. <laughs> so God, if I'm right, you change their mind, and... If they're not right, they still won't do what's right. That's really not my problem. That's between you and them. So I'm going to keep my joy and go on about my business. Come on, I'm giving you a new plan. This is a new plan. I'm going to double your joy immediately right here on Thursday night. New plan. So last week there was something that I thought Dave should go to with me. I felt like it was an important thing. and He told me that there was a football game. And then he told me that he only, you know, he said, well, you know, I only get to go to about six games a year. I'm like, well, I feel like you live there, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, Dave. <laughs> so, you know, right away I'm thinking, this is a responsibility. <laughs> and why should I go and take care of the responsibility while you go to another game? <laughs> but see, I've learned. Oh, dear God, I've learned. So I just said... We're both in the same room, and we're having the conversation, and I can see it, so I'm, just, so I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. Now, you know, when a woman says whatever, <laughs> you guys don't really get it. You know? It's like when you ask her what's wrong, and she says nothing. Well, with a woman, nothing doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> nothing means a lot. It means now she's had it and you best shut up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, I'm saying, well, I think you should, you know, I really think you probably, you know, should not go to the game and you should go do this. I think it would mean a lot to the person. And, and I could tell he wasn't liking it. So I just, in my heart, I said, okay, God, if you, if you want him to go and you convince him, if you don't want him to go, then anoint me to be happy anyway. 
See, I'm just not, I'm not living mad anymore. New way of living. I'm not living mad, I'm living glad. And I, you know, I walked by him, I scratched his head. I mean, I went out of my way to just be nice. <laughs> you sweet little thing, you. <laughs> you know, you don't have to feel like doing everything. You can just do some things because you just feel like that's what you ought to do. So anyway, about 10 minutes went by and he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll just give those football tickets away and I'll go with you. <laughs> Well, then the whole thing turned out to be a test for Dave because it turned out that I was wrong on the dates and he don't even have a game that day. But I said, but the good news is, is I passed the test and you got a chance to sacrifice. So we both get a reward and now we don't even have to do it. But I'm telling you that to show you how we give up our peace and we give up our joy just because we're trying to control a situation, when why don't we just apply John 16, 24, ask and receive that your joy might be full. Come on, now how many of you ever give up a whole day of joy just because you're trying to make somebody do something that they don't want to do? How many of you have wasted lots of years in your life being mad and upset and giving up your joy because you couldn't get everybody else to do what you want them to do. Well, guess what? You're only responsible for you. Get a little tunnel vision. Me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. When my time here's up, I'm going to stand before God and give an account of my life, not yours, 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 my life. I got to keep myself right with God. And He's telling me to keep my joy. I came that you might have and enjoy your life. I would even go so far to say, I think that if we do not enjoy our lives, it is a sin. Because Jesus said, I came, I died, I suffered, I paid your debt that you might have a life and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And I think we owe it to Jesus to be happy. Now, you know, some of you think, well, you don't feel happy. Well, I got a book coming up next year for that too, but before next year gets here. You're more than your feelings. If you stop feeding your feelings, then they'll stop controlling you. Don't have time for that message. John 17, 13. And now I'm coming to you, I say these things while I'm still in the world, so that my joy may be made full and complete and perfect in them, and that they might experience my delight fulfilled in them that my enjoyment may be perfected in their own souls and that they may have my gladness within them filling their hearts. Everybody shout out, God wants me to be happy. God wants me to be happy. All right, now. How many people do you think that there are in the church, in the world, who actually experience that kind of joy and delight that Jesus is talking about. I can say that I experience a lot more of it now than what I used to, but I still want to grow. You know what? If we don't want to grow, we've got something wrong with us. And there would have been a time in my life where I would have had to have sat up there and said, I don't experience that very much at all. Because it was really easy for the devil to steal my joy back then. It was so easy. I mean, he, I helped him so much, he didn't even have to work at it very much. Amen? I mean, at least let's get to the point where if the devil's going to steal our joy, he is going to have to really work overtime, double time, triple time to get it. We're not going to make it easy for him. And I just wonder, just speaking for a minute to our TV audience, I just wonder how many of you, 
didn't even really intend to watch this program tonight. You're still not sure you want to. You kind of just accidentally flipping channels, flipped into this lady hollering here on the platform, and you're thinking, <laughs> what does she think she's doing? But the truth of the matter is, is I've got your interest a little bit right now because you're not really enjoying your life much, and you're not a very happy person, and you're kind of wondering why. And I'm just telling you that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You have an enemy, the devil. But Jesus said, I came. I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. If you open up your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, learn about Him and His way of living, things can be radically different for you. Folks, we need to do more than merely exist. I did that for many years as a Christian. I even did it for some years as a person in ministry. <laughs> I just merely existed, just tried to get by from day to day. It wasn't that I was totally unhappy, but I wasn't really radically happy. I mean, I had to work at being happy. My circumstances had to be good for me to be happy. Nobody could do anything I didn't like for me to be happy. And we all know that that's a fantasy and a myth. And if you haven't figured that out yet, then you need to get the revelation tonight that your little life is not going to be perfect. I want to look at some scriptures in Ecclesiastes because these really helped me when I was trying to come to the conclusion of does God really want me to enjoy my life? Ecclesiastes 2, 24 and 25. There's nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and make himself enjoy good in his labor. I love that. Make himself. And I had to do that. It didn't come easy for me. I had to make myself say, I'm not going to just go through this day. I'm going to enjoy this day. I'm not just going to clean this house. I'm going to enjoy this house. I'm not just going to raise these kids. I'm going to enjoy these kids. Come on now. It's a decision. And I love what that says. There's nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and make himself enjoy good in his labor. Even in this, I have seen is the hand of God. Ecclesiastes 4, 7, and 8. Here's a guy that was doing it all wrong. Let's look at him for a minute. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun in one of its peculiar farms. Vanity means uselessness. Here is one alone, no one with him. He has no child nor brother. Yet there is no end to all of his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither does he ask... For whom do I labor and deprive myself of good? <laughs> this is also vanity, emptiness, falsity, and futility. Yet it is a painful effort, effort and an unhappy business. Now, how many of you can tell that guy was not happy? He was not in the group of folks that were enjoying life. Why? If you study those verses, you find three things. Number one, he had never taken time in life to develop any relationships. He was alone. He had no child. He had no brother. He'd spent so much time working in life that he never got around to enjoying anybody or anything. In the Western society, the Western culture that we're used to, work is looked at very differently than it is in many other parts of the world. Many parts of the world that I go to, relationship is much more important to them than just trying to see how much money they can make. And we have to realize that we're in the world, but we're not supposed to be of it or like it. And so we have to take what's going on in the world, compare that to the Word of God, and the Word of God has to win out every time. And the Bible teaches us, yes, that we should work, but everything must be in balance, and if it's not in balance, then we're going to have trouble in our life. How many people spend their whole life climbing the ladder of success only to end up lonely, with no family? And I heard this one time, and I love it. When you're on your deathbed, you're not going to ask for your bank balance. You're going to want your family. Yeah. 
Well, you know, we want to buy that new house. I better get a second job. No, you better stay where you're at and enjoy your family. Amen? The second thing you find out about this man is, is that work never seemed to be done no matter how hard he worked. I didn't get over being a workaholic until one night I was sitting in my office when everybody else was already downstairs enjoying themselves. And I like, seemed like I never got it all done no matter what I did, I never got it all done. Does anybody feel like no matter what you do, you never get it all done? But at that point, I didn't have the ability to leave it knowing it would be there the next morning and go ahead and enjoy myself. I would go and try to enjoy myself, but I would feel like I should be doing something. Doing something. And finally, I got it. It's like, Joyce, this dirt will still be here tomorrow. This pile will still be here tomorrow. And I've learned I have goals every day that are probably beyond anything that I can meet, but I no longer let it bother me if I don't meet them all because I know that I am not a lazy person. I work till I get tired, then I rest. And I don't care anymore what anybody thinks about it. I'm going to do something in life besides work. I used to say yes to everything that came through our ministry because that was what people wanted to hear is yes. People don't like it when you tell them no. And I wanted to keep everybody happy. I have gotten so good at saying no, and now I'm happy. Amen? And the other thing we find about this man is he was a wealthy man, but he did not enjoy one thing that he had. Do you know even to those of you who think you don't have very much, to most people in the world, you would be very wealthy. If you have a house, clothes, if you have shelter, clothing and food, actually to most of the world, you're a very wealthy person. To the lonely person, just to have somebody to sit down and eat a meal with, that makes you a very wealthy person. To have clean water, to drink, let alone to splash around in the bathtub in or let the shower run for 30 minutes if you want to. To most people in the world, that would make you an extremely wealthy person. We have so much in our society. And yet, sadly, I've seen people who have one thimble full of what most of us have, and they enjoy their little bit more than we enjoy our whole lot. And it's a mindset, it's an attitude. Sometimes a greedy attitude gets in and we're so busy trying to get more, 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 more. So we can have another one and another one and another one and a bigger one and a bigger one. We're on this quest for what? And I think that God wants to bless his people. You know that I believe that. I believe that God wants to bless you. I don't really think he cares what you have as long as you can keep him first. Be generous and enjoy it. Ecclesiastes 5, 18 and 19. Behold, what I've seen to be good and fitting is for one to eat and drink and to find enjoyment in all the labor in which he labors under the sun. Look at me and let me tell you something. Make a decision to enjoy your job. And if you can't enjoy it, then go find one you can enjoy. It. Don't drive to work saying, I hate this traffic. I hate my job. I can't wait till Friday. I hate this place. I hate the neighborhood I live in. Come on. I hate my neighbors. You go to work and you say, I love my job. Thank God I've got a job. I'm going to be the happiest person where I work. I'm going to be the most thankful person where I work. And look at me, you're going to have to do it on purpose. You will have to do it on purpose. This is not about feel like, this is about honoring God. And this is about worshiping Him with our lives and our attitudes. Because everything we have comes from Him. And if you don't appreciate what you've got, He can take it away from you and give it to somebody else.
Listen, I have a great life, but I still, many days, I have to be happy on purpose. You know why? Because we've all got a flesh, and it's stupid. No matter what you have, the flesh says, I need more. More. No matter what people do for you, they're not doing enough. Behold, what I've seen to be good and fitting is for one to eat and to drink and to find enjoyment in all the labor which he labors. Do you know, your work, I, if you're a stay-at-home mom, that's work. But whatever you do, that's a large part of your life. I mean, you put a major majority of your time into that. So for goodness sakes, Make a decision to enjoy it. And you can enjoy anything if you can enjoy God. You don't have to like all, every, all the circumstances and, and everybody that you're around. But find a way to enjoy God. And through God, get a smile on your face and begin to enjoy the life that Jesus died to give you. Is anybody understanding what I'm saying tonight? He paid for you to have enjoyment in your life. There's even all kinds of people in ministry that don't enjoy being in ministry. That was their dream and their vision, and they begged God for a ministry. Now they got a ministry. It's all the hardest work, all my schedule, all these people I have to take care of. Amen? Amen. Make a decision and set your mind that you're going to enjoy every single day of your life. Now, let me just say this, and then we're going to pick this up again tomorrow. You know, most of life is extremely ordinary. And we all have a tendency to want the whoo. We're waiting for the whoo to be happy. We're going to be happy when Friday comes. Whoo, it's payday. We can go out and spend all of our money so we don't have any later. <laughs> Come on now. Woo! We're going to eat birthday cake. Woo! Woo! It's Thanksgiving. We can stuff ourselves until we can't move. <laughs> Come on. Is anybody with me? Yeah. Woo! we got a vacation coming up. I'm happy today. Woo! And then tomorrow. That ain't gonna work. I hate this job. I hate this traffic. Gotta clean this stupid house. I hate this cracker box I live in. Nobody around here does any work. Woo! It's Friday. Woo! <laughs> Come on, we gotta level it out here and get some stability. Start enjoying everything in life. Everything in life. Now let me close with a homework assignment. Everybody can do it, it's not hard. I'm gonna tell you a secret. Okay, you wanna know a secret? You're not going to ever enjoy your life if you don't enjoy yourself. So you better start loving who you are. Man, I don't need it. You're no surprise to God. He knew all about that when he called you into relationship with him. Get over yourself. We're all a mess. Amen? Make a decision that you're going to enjoy your life. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy God. I've read a lot of works by a woman named Madame Guyon that lived in the 16th century, and she said the highest call in our life is to learn how to enjoy God. And I love that so much. Don't ever have a wrong kind of fear of God, or just be so busy trying to get little check marks on your spiritual calendar that you 
forget to just enjoy God and invite Him into everything that you're doing in your life. And see, that's the only way really you can enjoy God. See, you can enjoy cleaning your house if you can enjoy God while you're cleaning your house. You can enjoy going to the grocery store, changing the oil in your car, cutting the grass. If you've got a right attitude and you say, God, I can, I can enjoy this because you're with me and you're my joy. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise. person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted and then they look at you, get make eye contact and you smile and they read that smile and then they start smiling and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. So what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. emoties in ons op. Kan jij hier goed mee omgaan? Laat je niet leiden door jouw gevoelens. Joyce Meyer heeft daarover een boek geschreven, zodat jij de baas wordt over jouw emoties. Leven boven je gevoel. Bestel het boek Leven boven je gevoel nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Alle boeken van Joyce Meyer staan overzichtelijk op een rijtje in een brochure. Geef nieuwe impulsen aan je dagelijks leven en bestel deze gratis brochure nu telefonisch op nummer 026 20 22 100.